I waited till my mom went out for groceries, then snuck into her room. I'm just borrowing. Just borrowing. I'll pay you back soon. I know what it looks like. Trust me, I don't want to steal from my mom. But if I don't do this, then I could lose my boyfriend and my friends. Then I'll be lonely and sad and easy prey for mean kids to tease. Ooh. I rushed to the park to meet Florian, my boyfriend. That's him over there. I walked over to him and handed him the money. You promise you'll pay it back soon? Sure, babe. You know you can trust me. I went home and convinced myself that I'd have the money back before Mum even noticed. But the next day at school, I couldn't find Florian anywhere. At break time, I asked my friend if she'd seen him. And she told me the shocking truth. Florian had been sent to reformatory camp. Oh my god! Did he really just scam me? Feeling my eyes tear up, I rushed to a corner in the school garden. Okay, so I don't actually have feelings for Florian. I dated him and hung around with the rebel kids because I wanted to build a cool image. The truth is, I'm just a poor girl. If people find this out, then my life would be over, right? They'd isolate me and tease me. Hey, Shannon, are you okay? Oh no. That's my friend Rachel. I can't have her see me like this. Hey, what's happened? She sounded so sincere, and I had to admit it. It would kind of be nice being able to confide in someone. So I blurted out how my dad passed away last year, and now mom struggles to pay the bills, and she works all hours in a factory, and how Florian tricked me into giving him money from mom's savings. To my surprise... Rachel put her arm around me and, smiling sweetly, said, It's okay, Shannon. I can lend you the money. You can pay me back whenever. My eyes lit up and I spluttered out. Really? You do that for... me? Of course. We're friends, aren't we? Wow, that was surprising. Turns out I'd massively underestimated my friend. I thought she would tease me if she knew the truth, but instead... She actually sympathized with me and tried to help me. At lunchtime, my friend Dee sat down next to me and asked why I looked so down. Hmm, I wonder. I then glumly stared down at my yogurt, sighed, and told her how awful things were for me at the moment. She rubbed my arm and told me it would be okay. Then she lent me some money. Wow, it worked again! I did this a couple more times and voila! I had enough money to replace in my mom's box before she even noticed it was missing. Oh, that's so pretty. It would be just perfect for my upcoming model audition. But there's no way I can afford it. <sighs> I glumly walked off, daydreaming about how amazing I'd look in that dress. Hi, Shannon. I turned around and... Oh, it was Brett, this dorky guy from school. He hurried over to me nervously itched at his neck, and then spluttered out, Hey, Shannon, are you shopping? Ugh, this guy was so annoying, as if a pretty girl like me would be interested in a dorky guy like him. Hmm, hang on, was that a Louis Vuitton shopping bag in his hands? I must have been looking at it, as he lifted it up and, blushing, said, Oh, it's a present for my mom's birthday. I stroked his arm then gave him my best doe-eyed look. Brett, you're such a good son. Your parents must be so proud of you. I wish I could get my mom something that meaningful too, but we're too poor. I sniffed. I can't even afford this really pretty dress I need for my audition. Brett smiled sweetly at me and said, That's okay. I, um, how about I get you the dress as a birthday gift? Your birthday's coming up anyway, right? Let's go! So that's how I ended up with the perfect dress. Oh, and I also ended up with a new boyfriend, Brett. At first, it was great being taken out to posh restaurants and bought lavish gifts for, but then the shine started to fade. I didn't like Brett in that way. In fact, I found him kind of annoying. He's not handsome at all, and he does the dumbest stuff. The other day in the lunch queue, he actually started showing me the terrible dance for his latest TikTok video, and it was so embarrassing. 
Whenever I had to hang around with Brett, I found myself daydreaming about someone else. This hot boy named Tyler. <sighs> if only I wasn't stuck in this rut with Brett. But it was worth it for the money and stuff. Right? Then one day at school, Rachel came over to me and asked me for her money back. I told her I was really sorry, but I didn't have any at the minute. Rachel sneered. Really? Then how come you have all this new stuff? You know my family's poor. I hardly ever see my mom as she works so much. I don't have any money. Fine! Whatever! She stormed off. Rachel must have spoken to the others about this, as when I was with Brett next to the lockers, they came over to me and all started asking for their money back. I tried explaining to them that I didn't have any money, but one of them snorted. Yeah, right. You've had us all fooled with your sob story. Watch out, Brett. She'll do the same to you, too. Then they walked off. Brett was giving me this questioning look, so I tried to act like everything was fine and started sorting my books out. He didn't say anything after that, so I acted as nothing happened and held onto his arm as we walked to class. Then suddenly, he pushed my hand away. Is it true? Are you only with me for my money? No! How can you say that? Stop being ridiculous. I tried to deny, but he wouldn't quit going on and on, which drove me mad. You don't trust me? Fine! I don't think I want to be with someone who thinks that little of me anymore. Goodbye! I then stormed off to the girls' restroom. Phew! I almost got exposed. But hey, at least I was now free of bread, right? But what if Rachel and the others started making more of a fuss about the money? I didn't want them being mean to me about it. I needed to find a way to pay them all back. And fast! I approached Tyler after his basketball practice and asked him if he'd like to go for a drink. There, I put on the waterworks and told him all about my poor family and how I borrowed money from my friends to pay the bills, and now they're all mad at me. Tyler seemed genuinely concerned and instantly handed over some money. I hugged him and repeatedly thanked him. Mmm, he smelled so good, but I felt kind of bad. This isn't like with Brett, since I really do like Tyler, and I feel guilty for taking his money. After that, I went and found Rachel and the others and paid them back. I thought my friends would be okay with me now, but turns out they weren't. Whenever I passed them at school, they sneered and gossiped about me. This sucked, but at least I had Tyler. We started hanging out all the time, and he was so sweet and funny. He also offered to lend me more money, but I refused as I didn't want to borrow any more than I needed to ever again. Then, that evening, I was scrolling through my social media account when I saw some posts about... me. Oh no... They were saying how I took advantage of other people's sympathy to get money. I was freaking out. So I quickly replied to the thread saying it wasn't like that. And my life was hard. But then Rachel commented, Here she goes, playing the victim again. The next day at school was awful. I felt like everyone was gawping at me. But as long as Tyler was by my side, it's all okay. I was chilling with him by the soccer field. When Brett walked over, an angry look on his face. You used me, didn't you? You never liked me at all. You just wanted my money. I stared at him open-mouthed, not knowing what to say. That's real low, Shannon. Hey, Ty, if I was you, I'd stay away from her. Unless you want to end up in debt. He walked off. Is what he said true? No. Well, yes, but it was the past. It isn't like that with you, I promise. Tyler shook his head, then said, I didn't think you were like that. Then he grabbed his stuff and left. This was awful. Not only had I lost all my friends, but now I'd lost the boy I truly cared for, too. After that, everyone ignored me at school. It felt horrible to know I was that unpopular, and I couldn't wait to finish school. When my graduation day finally arrived and I went up to get my certificate, suddenly, Rachel rushed up onto the stage and grabbed the mic. Hey everyone, I think it's only fair that you all know the truth about Shannon. 
She uses her friend's sympathy to get money out of us. She even dated a guy just so she could make him buy her everything she wanted. Oh my god. All the teachers, students, and even my mom were staring at me. I felt like I was going to faint from shame. So I frantically pushed past everyone and raced out of there. When I got home, I locked myself away in my room and cried into my pillow. I was never leaving my room again. The shame was too much. A little later, my mom knocked on my door. Then she came into my room and perched on the edge of my bed. Honey, I'm just wondering why you did those things. I told mom everything about Florian tricking me, how I took money off my friends and used Brett. Then afterward, I took a box from under my bed, opened it, and told mom it was for her. In it was a new safety outfit for her work, as well as some new casual clothes, too. Your work outfit is already worn out, and I want you to have nice clothes. I know we aren't wealthy or anything, but you work so hard, and you deserve nice things. Sweetie, thank you. But you don't have to buy me anything. I know it's been a struggle since your dad passed away. But it's never okay to play the victim to take advantage of people like that. Then she hugged me. What's done is already done. Now the only thing you can do is apologize to them all, then start a new life. Become a better person. So that whole summer, I did just that. I apologized to all of my friends, every single one of them. Well, except Tyler, as he was away all summer. <sighs> then I went to college for a fresh start. I swear, I won't make the same mistakes again. I've learned my lesson on that one. Oh, I'm so nervous. Tyler is in the city this weekend and he's agreed to meet me. Oh my god. There he is. This is it. I finally have the chance to apologize to him. I hope he forgives me and sees how much I regret what I did. This time away from him made my feelings grow even stronger. Oh boy, I just miss him so much. He still looks at me with that soft smile and such sparkle in his eyes. I can't lose him this time. And I won't. Wish me luck. Why wasn't it working? I followed all the steps. But still, nothing. At that moment, my best friend Harry walked towards me and asked with a confused look, Hey, what you doing? <sighs> Hey, Harry, I'm just working on this plan to become popular, but it isn't going so well. I changed my style and posted more on social media, but I'm still not cool. You're probably wondering why I was desperately wanting to be popular, right? Well, it's all because of my annoying hiccups. Last year, I was on stage performing the play Our Town when I suddenly started to hiccup, constantly. I couldn't stop, and the whole audience started to laugh at me. In the end, they had to replace me with my understudy. Not only was it the most humiliating moment of my life, but I've also been teased about it ever since. This year, I wanted to become popular. Then everyone would forget about the hiccuping incident. <sighs> if only becoming popular was easy. Hey, you could help me. No way! Your plan is crazy! At that moment, the new student, Amanda, passed by surrounded by a bunch of other students. Why is this girl so popular? I mean, she's only been here a week. You don't know? She's Dustin's sister. He's already the most popular guy in school. So being his sister makes her popular too. Duh. That's it, Harry. The fastest way for me to climb the popularity ladder is to date Dustin. At first, Harry seemed confused by this, but then he suddenly agreed to help me. With one condition, of course, that after I succeeded in becoming Dustin's girlfriend, I had to introduce Amanda to him. I knew it! He had a crush on her. Every guy in the school does. Fine, I'll help him, as I need Harry in this anyway. He plays a crucial role in my plan, and you'll soon figure out why. After school, I was waiting in a corner at the parking lot when Harry walked towards me, followed by Dustin. I heard you're giving tutor lessons. Yeah, that's right. I don't take money. I just need... What do you need? 
I need you to pretend to be my boyfriend. Dustin burst out laughing. But then when he saw our serious looks, he stopped. Um, you two are crazy. But I do need to pass math, so... Okay. However, my grades have to improve within two weeks. Then we have a deal. Deal? I grinned. Within two weeks? That's so easy. What a catch. You must be wondering how we managed to pull that off. Well, Harry's on Dustin's soccer team and overheard the coach tell him if he didn't improve his math grade, he'd be kicked off the team. Basically, we used Dustin's weakness to get the deal. <laughs> I know I had no chance with him by using my lousy flirting skills. So it's time to use my greatest strength, my brain. Pretty smart, huh? I started to tutor Dustin. Then after two weeks, he shot up two grades. And that's when he held up his end of the deal and pretended to be my boyfriend. The next day, Dustin and I held hands and walked into school. And just as I expected, everybody was gawping at us. I even heard them whisper about me, is that the hiccup girl with Dustin? And, whoa, since when were those two a thing? Ha, <laughs> and that's not all. Wherever I went, people would follow me. And in every class, everyone wanted to sit next to me. Finally, I was popular, and I loved it. I just finished tutoring Dustin at his house and was about to head home when his mom appeared and invited me to stay for dinner. Awkward, but I didn't want to be rude, so I said yes. Besides, this was a great opportunity to talk to Amanda. I was sitting next to Dustin at the dinner table when Amanda walked in and gave me a dirty look. What is she doing here? Amanda, manners! Um... Okay, had I upset her somehow? After we finished eating, I helped Amanda clean up. I pulled some homemade chocolate cookies out of my bag and gave my friendly a smile as I said, Um, my friend Harry, he likes you. I was wondering if... Without letting me finish my sentence, Amanda interrupted me. Sorry, let me stop you right there. First, I don't eat cookies. Gross. Second, I assume you're asking me if I want to go out with your friend, right? Um, no, because he's a loser just like you. It's embarrassing enough that Dustin is dating you. Then she walked off, leaving me standing there dumbfounded. Oh my god, couldn't believe what I just heard. How could a person be so rude? Ugh. The next day at school, I wanted to tell Harry to give up on Amanda, but as soon as I caught sight of him, he ran towards me, hugged me and said, Emily, you're a matchmaking genius. Thank you. Huh? What do you mean by that? Amanda just asked me if I wanted to come to her party this weekend. Isn't that great? Yay! What on earth was going on? But Harry looked so happy that I just couldn't tell him the truth. One thing's for sure, there's something sus about Amanda. Of course, I was going to that party too, because I was Dustin's girlfriend, remember? Wow, we were actually at a cool kid's party. Her first time ever. This was awesome. Harry even got a bit emotional. <laughs> what a baby. Dustin and I teamed up to play beer pong, and it was so much fun, and unexpectedly, we won. We were so excited, and both of us cheered with joy and hugged each other without thinking. Oops, didn't see that coming. But what happened next was even crazier. Everybody started to cheer, kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh boy, they couldn't be serious, right? I just laughed it off and hoped everyone would stop. But no, they just kept cheering on. Suddenly, Dustin grabbed my face and kissed me right on the lips. I didn't push him away. Oh no, instead, I closed my eyes and got carried away. I even lifted up one leg. Oh, and FYI, that was my first kiss. After that, we both turned bright red and avoided eye contact. Ugh, my whole body felt hot like I was having a fever or something. <laughs> anyway, the party was everything I dreamed of and more. The next day, Harry and I arrived at school in a super good mood. But suddenly, we saw a bunch of students gathering around someone. We squished through the crowd and saw Amanda crying. Turns out, somebody from the party had stolen two of her mom's Fabergé eggs. Then, one of Amanda's friends suggested checking all backpacks and lockers of everyone who went to the party last night. But the chances are low. The culprit must have been able to hide all the evidence by now. Still, we should try everything we can, right? I couldn't bear seeing Amanda crying her eyes out like this. Then he gently patted her shoulder. 
Hey, that was smooth. Way to go, Harry. And so, we checked a few people's belongings, and still nothing was found. Then it was Harry's turn. He opened the locker, and... Oh. My. God. One of the Fabergé eggs was in there! But how? He would never do such a thing. I opened my locker, and... What?! There was the other one! What on earth was going on? Suddenly, Amanda started shouting at us. I knew it was you two! Hey everybody, Emily over here manipulated Dustin by using his weaknesses, his love of soccer, and his dislike for math. Then she forced him to pretend to be her boyfriend just so she could be cool. Everybody started glaring at me like I was the villain, but I wasn't. There was a misunderstanding. I looked over to Dustin for help but he just avoided my gaze, then walked off. I didn't know what to do, so I just stood there in shock until Harry dragged me off with him. Well, after that, I was more popular than ever. I was now known as the girl who took advantage of a guy to get popular and then stole from him. Worse, Amanda wouldn't listen to me. Harry and I were clearly framed. <sighs> I wish I could go back to my normal life before I made that stupid deal with Dustin. Oh, but then that kiss wouldn't have happened. Oh boy, might I have fallen for Dustin? Then suddenly I got a text from Amanda. It was a clip from the recent party with the message, You're nothing to Dustin. Why are you dating this loser? Wasn't she the girl who hiccuped during the play? <laughs> I will use her until the end of this semester. Oh my, I couldn't believe he said that. I knew he didn't like me in the way I liked him. But did he have to be so mean? The clip automatically replayed again. Ugh. Watching this one time was bad enough. But wait, there was a detail in the clip that caught my attention. I rewound it and, oh my god, there were the two missing Fabergé eggs. The clip was recorded at midnight, but Harry and I left the party way before then. I quickly rushed over to Dustin and Amanda's house and showed them the video. I don't remember you both leaving earlier. What if you're lying? Well, I noticed your front door has cameras. If you want, we could check them. Dustin turned to Amanda and confusingly asked, Did you put those eggs in Emily and Harry's lockers? Amanda said nothing, but her head down said it all. But why would you do that? Emily didn't do anything wrong. Because I don't like her being your girlfriend. I... I like you. Um, what? Isn't she his sister? Oh, turns out they aren't actually siblings. Phew. That would have been weird. The truth is their parents were really close. And when Amanda's parents died in an accident, Dustin's family took her in. So Amanda was like a sister to Dustin, but Amanda, on the other hand, has been in love with him for a long time. I decided not to make a big deal out of it. As long as she posted a status on social media saying this was all a misunderstanding and that we didn't steal from her, and she reluctantly agreed. Afterward, I immediately got out of there without saying anything else to Dustin, but he ran after me and apologized for not defending me the other day. He just couldn't choose between me and Amanda. And then he said, That clip you saw wasn't what you think. Ugh. What's there not to understand? It was so obvious. Then what is it? Please tell me. But Dustin just stood there silent and stared down at his sneakers. Just like I thought. There's nothing else to explain, so I stormed off. The next day, Amanda posted the status, and our names were finally cleared. My life is back to being boring, but it's okay, as I now know that being popular isn't what brings me happiness. Oh, and about me and Dustin? Well, a few days later, he sent me a video. It was the same clip from the party. At first, this frustrated me. I mean, why would he make me endure watching that again? But then I noticed that this clip was longer, so out of curiosity, I pressed play. And you won't believe what happened in the second half of that video. After the part where Dustin said he just wanted to use me, everybody teased him more. He got angry and yelled. Yes, Emily is weird, but weird in a good way. I like the way she smells books every time she opens one, and the cute way she gets embarrassed when she sneezes loudly. And do you know what I like most about her? that she hiccups every time she's nervous. You heard me right, I like her. You see, Dustin likes me too. Amanda cut this part of the video out on purpose so I'd misjudge him. But now that I knew the truth, what do you think I did? Yeah, of course I forgave him. I mean, how couldn't I? <laughs> I raised the bow, hyper-focused. The target was right in front of me. Watch me conquer. Only... 
Grandpa, that one would have hit the bullseye. I'm just teasing. <laughs> You're getting real good, pumpkin. Hi, I'm Gina, and I love archery. My grandfather, my only family, introduced me to the sport. He always encouraged me to join contests, saying I had a knack for it. But competition's not really my thing. Talking to strangers was enough of a challenge for me. But my only friend, Bailey, is lovely and cheerful. We've been close since childhood to the day we came to the city for high school and became roommates. My new life promises fun and excitement, but I missed my grandpa dearly and wrote to him often. Dear Grandpa, my life here is wonderful. The dorm room is nice, clean and tidy, and every morning, soothing instrumental music from the speaker reminds me of the times we enjoyed music and a tea together on the front porch. Ugh, Bailey, turn it down. And are you gonna do something about your mess? Jeez, it's an organized mess. Ask me about anything, and I can find it immediately. By the way, there's a welcome party for freshmen tonight. Shall we go? Nah, I'm too tired. Come on, Gina, it'll be fun. You'll make some new friends, too. It's just... Okay, stay here then. I'm leaving. Somehow, I felt a bit empty. I'd never noticed that Bailey and I were so different until recently. Bailey's a social butterfly who can make new friends easily. And me? I was introverted and reserved. Hmm, I can't keep being this way. I came to the city for the experience. Duh. So when Bailey asked me to go to the school's fair, I immediately agreed. When the day came, while Bailey's chatting and giggling with other students, I just kind of absentmindedly faded into the background. Since Bailey did not seem to notice my absence, I decided to look around on my own. Suddenly, a scream startled me. Thief! Thief! I turned around to see a thief running away with a girl's handbag. Without thinking, I grabbed a set of bow and arrows nearby and shot at him. That's when I saw another arrow. Flying in the same direction, both arrows hit the thief right on his head and knocked him to the ground. I looked for the other archer and saw the Greek god Apollo, who's also looking at me. Then he went to handle the thief as I took the opportunity to quietly leave the scene. I was still daydreaming about that guy when Bailey barreled into our dorm with a group of friends. I quickly turned myself into a burrito and pretended to be asleep. But Bailey ruthlessly unfurled me with a wide grin. Hey, G, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Samantha, head of the school's archery club. Bailey told me you're quite an archer. Yeah, sort of. Well, we're looking for new members. You should come by. I'll be sure to stop by. Thanks. After school the next day, I visited the archery club and saw a familiar face. That's the guy from yesterday. Ooh, he also blows on the arrow like Grandpa. So cute. Oops, busted. Am I hallucinating or is he walking toward me? Hi, you were at the school fair. Your shot was phenomenal. I'm Chris, by the way. I'm Gina. So you're new here? Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to join yet. Well, how about a little demonstration? Panicked, I tried to shoot with shaky hands and totally botched it. Sorry. Relax, you got this. He leaned over me and my heart was beating like crazy. I took a deep breath, softly blew at the fletching, and this time, I hit the target. See? Amazing shot. You should be more confident and open up so more people can get to know you. So Chris is into extroverts? He's right. It must be great being around an outgoing, confident girl like Bailey. She'd only been here for a week and already knew half of the school, and everyone loved her. So later that day, after struggling with myself, I decided to ask Bailey for help. Help? With what? Help me be you, an extrovert. You're fine the way you are. Why change? Right then, Samantha came to pick her up to go to a birthday party. Want to join us? Uh, you'd rather stay here and read, correct? You know me. Then Bailey left, just like that. All right, if she doesn't want to help, I'll do it myself. Time to break out of my cocoon. So I spend the next few hours giving myself a makeover. Not bad, was it? When I arrived at the party, everyone gawked at me. Hey, are you the sun? Because your beauty is blinding me. If so, you should stay 93 million miles away from me. As much as I wanted to run straight home, a voice in my head kept screaming, Socialize! On the internet, they said extroverts are always ready to make friends. Like Bailey, who's part of every single conversation. So I mustered all courage to throw myself into the largest group who's talking about cute arctic animals. 
I remembered a communication tip. Lead the conversation. So I did. Isn't it so sad that those animals are losing their habitat to climate change? The next five minutes was me monologuing about the issue, but they didn't seem too interested. Okay, plan B. Bailey also always knows how to stand out, so... When everyone started dancing, I stood in the middle of the room and danced my heart out. But after that, everyone looked at me like I was an alien, including Chris. When I was finally in my room, I felt totally defeated. Do you seriously want to be an extrovert? I need to, Bailey. If so, maybe take it slow and don't push yourself too hard. You don't have to become outgoing overnight. Ugh, Bailey clearly didn't believe I could do it. Fine, I'll show her she wasn't the only charming extrovert here. My first order of business was joining the archery club. That would be my best chance to impress Chris. To make up for the embarrassment at the party, I braced myself and approached the most playful guy here. Uh, hi, I'm Gina. I like your shirt. Um, thanks. I'm Patrick. Patrick is the student council president. He's here to help promote the archery club. Then whenever Chris passed by, I tried to joke around with Patrick, although he seemed distracted. But Chris just turned away and looked unhappy. Gina, what's the deal with you and that Chris guy? He keeps looking over here. Oh, Chris? He's just a club mate. Maybe it's because he doesn't like me very much. Boys thing. Anyway, I'm thinking about joining this club. Would you teach me? Sure thing. After that, Patrick and I often practiced our tree together. I got too excited and set the target as far as I could, pulled a string with all my might, and tried to keep my cool as the arrow hit the bullseye. Out of nowhere, Chris popped out. Awesome, Gina. Best shot I've ever seen. Impressive, Gina. Wanna grab a drink before you teach me how to do that? Right then, Chris offered me a bottle. You like apple juice, right? I saw you only drink that at the party. Eee! He noticed! Thank you! Would you like a ride back later? Finally, a chance to get closer to Chris! I'll drive you, Gina. I'm more familiar with that route. I was gonna say no, but Patrick had already pulled me away. Why did he ruin my romantic moment? Maybe he liked me too, but I already had my sights set on Chris. Chris seemed to care about me, but it would take a little more for us to actually be a thing. Everything was falling into place, and I felt like I was becoming more outgoing. Though sometimes I still took detours or hid in the restroom to avoid small talks, things with Chris were going well. But the next day, I saw Bailey and Chris locking arms and laughing happily on the street. Are they dating? Then why did Chris keep my hopes up and act like he cared about me? All my efforts were for nothing. Even if I tried to be like Bailey, of course Chris would prefer the original. I glumly went to my room shortly before Bailey, Holly, jolly as usual, came back. You look awfully happy. Hot date? Nope, not at all. Are we having secrets now? Of course not! Anyway, what are you up to today? Beating around the bush, huh? She's obviously in love with Chris, but why keep it a secret? Just so they could still mess with others' feelings. After that, I refused to talk to Bailey and avoided Chris. Whenever he greeted me, I'd pretend I didn't see him. And if he approached me, I'd go to Patrick or ask him to take me home. It was petty, but what else could I do? In Patrick's car, I got Chris's texts. He probably just wanted to two-time me, so I turned off my phone. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You're not a very good liar, but I have just the thing to cheer you up. A few minutes later, we pulled up to a quiet spot with a stunning view. But magnificent as the sunset was, I still felt the sadness wash over me. Wanna talk about it? And I did. I really did. It felt good to finally get everything off my chest. Patrick listened patiently, nodding in understanding. When I finished, it's already twilight. Thank you for listening to my rant. Sure, anytime. Uh, I want to be there for you, Gina, and I would never hurt you. I know you're into Chris, but I really care about you. You're a true hidden gem, and I want to help you be all that you're meant to be. I was surprised. At that moment, Patrick became even more attractive than I'd ever thought. Maybe I could, I should, be with someone like him and forget about those toxic people. So, I agreed to date him. The following day, Patrick already made it public. See, that's what a decent guy would do. He took me to the spa, cooked for me, and was always so sweet. I'd never felt this way for anyone, and it actually felt like love. However, it wasn't always peachy being Patrick's girl. He constantly attended tons of events as the student council president and would have me as his plus one. On those occasions, Patrick would talk to everyone while I stood awkwardly. I wanted to join, but didn't know how. All right, laughing would totally show that I'm following their conversation. But everyone just stared blankly at me. What's so funny about my grandma's broken hips? Oh, jeez, I wanted to dig myself a hole immediately. Soon after, Patrick told me to utilize my archery skills for a fundraising commercial shoot. 
The pictures went viral, and I became popular. People wanted to befriend me everywhere I went, and it was exhausting. When I told Patrick, he said, That's good. You'll be the face of this fund, which will help a lot of people. Like Katniss Everdeen and the First Rebellion. I'm so proud to have you as my girlfriend. Let's keep this up, okay? Something about that didn't sit well with me. But isn't this the life I've always been dreaming of? I was so busy with Patrick's plans that I had no time left for myself. I even forgot to write to Grandpa, and it had been a while since since I last went to the archery club. Bailey tried to catch up with me, but I still ignored her. We grew further apart, even though we shared a room. The show today was suddenly cancelled, so I seized this chance to drop by the archery club. I got more comfortable and liberated with each arrow I shot. I finally felt like myself again. When I was done, I caught Chris staring at me. I was instantly flustered and tried to leave, but Chris followed me. Gina, I don't even recognize you anymore. It's like you're trying to be someone you're not. Are you really happy? You're the fake one. You like social butterflies, don't you? If I stop trying, I'll become invisible again. You just don't like Patrick, and it bothers you that he's my boyfriend. You're right. I don't like him, but it has nothing to do with this. Not wanting to hear any more of his lies, I just stormed off. But as much as I didn't want to believe Chris, his words got me thinking. I found Bailey waiting for me in our dorm room. She looked a bit timid. How are things going between you and Patrick? Everything okay? Of course. You got a problem with us? <sighs> Can you come with me after school tomorrow? There's something I want to show you. I followed her out of curiosity. Bailey led me to the back of the school, then told me to hide in a corner and wait. Then I saw Patrick? He wrapped his arm around Bailey, who promptly pushed him away. Come on, I know you've got a thing for me, Bailey. Why won't you leave me alone? You literally have a girlfriend. Pfft, Gina, I made that chick who she is. A cash grab to make a quick buck off of. That stupid girl still believes that was actually a fundraiser. I could have picked anyone, but the fact that it bothers Chris when I'm with her was the icing on top. I can't be with that obnoxious weirdo, but you? A magnificent work. I can't take it anymore and bolted towards Patrick and slapped him right across his smug face. You are the biggest jerk I've ever met. Uh, you're the biggest loser I've ever met. You have the magnetism of a towel. Watching you embarrass yourself in front of all my friends is painfully terrible. No wonder they snicker about you behind your back. I dashed away in tears as Bailey scolded him. She caught up to me shortly after. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. Recently, Patrick started flirting with me. I couldn't go without showing you his true colors. You can say that because everyone loves you. Even Chris chooses you. And I thought I had a chance with him. It's so unfair. People will never treat introverts like me the way they treat you. <gasps> Wait! You like Chris? Having no energy left to be angry, I slumped down, sobbing. Listen, I'm sorry that I refuse to help you become an extrovert. The reason is, you're already amazing, Gina. Since we were kids, I've always admired you. You're smart, patient, and determined. What? Would you believe me if I said I wanted to be more like you? But then I realized that introverts and extroverts have their own strengths, and we do best when we're ourselves. That's why I am who I am, and you should be none other than yourself. I held back my tears as best as I could and hugged Bailey tightly. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you. Thank you for telling me what I need to hear. I returned to my room and saw a letter from Grandpa. He asked how I was lately and why I stopped writing to him. He knew living in a new environment would be difficult, but as long as I understood my own worth, I could overcome everything. He finished his letter by saying he'll always love me unconditionally. Tears welled up in my eyes again. Shortly after, Bailey came back all excited. I have a surprise for you. When we got outside, Chris was already waiting. I was extremely embarrassed and confused to see him. Gina, from the moment we met at the fair, I haven't stopped thinking about you. I was impressed with your archery skills, but before I knew it, I was charmed by your intelligence, kindness, even your shyness. Aren't you dating Bailey? What? Chris is my cousin. He talks about you all the time. I was going to set you two up, but you were already with someone else. <laughs> I couldn't believe my ears, and my heart went wild. At that moment, Bailey received another flirty text from Patrick. Ugh! What am I supposed to do with this sleazeball? Well, well, well. Could you believe it? Bailey let him hear blindfolded for a surprise. Okay, ready for my present? Patrick was surely surprised to see me aiming right at him. 
You better come clean about all the cheating you did. It wasn't cheating. You weren't even my girlfriend, loser. Before he could finish, I launched an arrow right above his head. Lucky for you, my aim was just right. But who knows? A loser like me could have missed. Patrick freaked out and literally peed his pants. Then he confessed to all his faults. Siphoning off public funds, love scamming for money, which all had been recorded. As soon as the video was posted, Patrick was boycotted and lost his student council president position. He had to switch school after a week. I finally felt confident in myself and won many archery competitions. During the holiday, I brought Bailey and Chris back home to meet my grandpa and showed him my many trophies. Remember everyone, be the best version of yourself and the right person will love the real you. Hmm, I wonder who will hit the jackpot this week. How about that blonde Joseph? Nah, he's too slow. Or there's Arthur. The last time that weakling even struggled to carry my tray of food. Seeing as there's a science test this week, I suppose I better pick someone smart. That's when I spotted Jace. His dad's my family's driver. Yeah, that nerd definitely won't let me down. So I'm Victor. I'm 17 years old and I'm rich. My father's contributed so much money to this school that he has more power than the principal. So no matter what mischief I cause, the teachers know it's in their best interest to turn a blind eye. And look, I'm not only rich, but also handsome. Everyone wants to be my friend. Everyday girls chase after me, but tough luck for them. I'm already dating the hottest girl in school, Jessica. As for the boys, it's only fair they get to spend time with me. So each week I choose one of them to hang around with me and do my errands. Hey Jace, congrats dude, it's your lucky week. Sorry, could you choose someone else? Jace said timidly, then walked away. What? No one ever dared refuse me. I pulled his hand back, but ah, he even spilled my juice box. That's it, nerd. You are so dead. The next day, I was standing by my locker instructing Arthur to sort out my books when I overheard Jace talking to his friend about the science essay. Ugh. I totally forgot that we had to submit it online by midnight instead of in class. Hmm, I know. I'll make Jace's assignment mine. <laughs> oh, genius. That afternoon, I told my PE teacher that Jace was on duty. So she made him go tidy up the gym after class. Meanwhile, I went to his laptop and copied his work. Well, essay, done. Easy peasy. A few days later, the science teacher called the two of us to the office and asked why our assignments were identical. But hey, not only had I submitted it first, but I also had my foot on his neck. So of course I got to keep my A and Jace got an F. Ha! After school, Jace followed me to the car. Then when I was about to get in, he leaped in front of me and slammed the door shut. You're a cheater. You stole my assignment. Nah, I'm the one who has to say that. I submitted it first. Hearing us arguing, Jace's father stepped out of the car and frantically apologized to me for what his son did. You should know who you are. Your dad's just a servant, which makes you nothing. I smirked. Then I snatched the key from his dad's hand and jumped in the car. I'll get home by myself today. Bye, losers. That nerd had ruined my mood, and now I needed to cheer myself up with some fun. Oh boy, that party was awesome. As I passed through a tunnel, I turned the music volume up to max and swayed along. Suddenly, I looked up to see a truck whizzing towards me, so I swerved just in time and crashed into the road railing. Jeez, what the... I mumbled, then got out of the car. Anyway, I left my car there and got an Uber home. But hang on. Why was everyone driving on the left side of the road today instead of the right? Maybe the combination of alcohol and dizziness was making me imagine stuff. I opened my eyes and stretched out my arms. Ouch! Um, this wasn't my room. In my drunken haze, I must have wandered into someone's shabby home. I rushed out of there and ran downstairs to find my mom and dad in the kitchen having breakfast. Victor, hurry up, else you'll be late. Oh, uh, don't forget you're helping your mom out in the grocery store after school. What's with all this role-playing? Where am I? Terrified, I ran outside to check. What? The address is correct. 138 Riverside, but my house was a magnificent mansion. What's this hovel? Surely this is just some dream, right? I rushed back into the house and shouted, Mom, Dad, what's happened to our mansion? Son, are you dreaming? Ha <laughs> ha, us rich enough to have a mansion. Now that's an unlikely thought. Now go change your clothes and I'll take you to school. No way, this was just a bad dream. Which often ends when we reach another location, right? Maybe when I get to school, everything will return to normal. Oh, school looks exactly the same. 
I was so relieved. I walked along the corridor and greeted people. Huh? Why were they blanking me? Ugh, have they forgotten who's the boss around here? But never mind, there's my honey bunch Jessica. I ran over to her and kissed her cheek. But I hugged my cheek in shock. My head was spinning, then suddenly someone nudged me from behind. It was Jace? I grabbed his collar. How dare he mess with me right in front of Jessica. Get your hands off my boyfriend. You're Jace's choice this week, so mind your attitude. Jace chose me? <laughs> Who do you think you are? A dog poor dude like you wouldn't be able to have a proper life and to attend this school without my family. Take a look at yourself. Honey, ignore him. Let's go. Jessica rubbed his arm and then they both left. I stood there dumbfounded. What on earth was going on? I felt like I tumbled into an alternate universe. I slapped myself in the face to snap out of it. Ouch. Why wasn't I waking up from this nightmare? This all started with that tunnel, right? If that was the door into this world, then it would also be the door out of this insanity. So I got in a cab to go back there. But wait, where was the tunnel? I made the driver go back and forth a few times, but it wasn't there. Then I ran out of money for the ride back, so the driver just left me there. Bewildered, I wandered around aimlessly till I reached a grocery store, where I spotted my mom working. Gosh, my mom, who always had servants around, now had to work her butt off? I couldn't bear seeing her like this and rushed over to help her. The next day I woke up early and thought that I'd choose a decent outfit to go to school. Well, life has to go on, so while I'm still stuck here, I should at least play my part. But, ugh, this version of me has terrible fashion taste. And look, now I've turned into a real nerd. I need to change it up a bit. When I arrived at school and opened my locker, there was a list of orders from Jace. What? Clean all of the dirt off his sneakers? This was nonsense. So I threw the piece of paper into the trash. Then out of nowhere, Arthur quickly picked it up and whispered into my ear. Dude, I suggest you do as Jay says. Why? He's ridiculous. To keep the peace. No one actually likes him. We're only nice to him because we don't want any trouble. And seeing Jace approaching, Arthur hurried away. Over the next few days, I saw it firsthand. People sucked up to Jace, but then behind his back, they were mean about him. He walked around like he ruled the school. He even got one kid expelled just because they reported him when he cheated on an exam. Such a spoiled brat. Also, Jessica was such a gold digger. One time I caught her flirting with one of those basketball guys. I even overheard her say, If Jace wasn't a rich kid, I wouldn't look at him twice. He's just an ATM to me. Hang on, if Jess thought that about Jace, then did she think the same way about me when we were dating? So all this time, Jace never had a real friend, just like me before. Honestly, he was detestable, but pitiable at the same time. After that, I noticed that Jess kept on giving me these flirty looks. I didn't want any trouble, so I ignored her. Then one time when I was in the hallway, she stormed over to me and yelled, Why are you avoiding me? No one ever rejects me. I was trying to stay away from her. Then, from nowhere, Jace appeared throwing a tantrum. What's this about? I didn't have a chance to explain as Jess immediately rushed over to Jace. Honey, he keeps approaching me. He won't leave me alone. It's not like that. She's using you. I looked at him in panic. Parking lot, 3.30 p.m. You'll pay for messing with my girlfriend. Then the two walked away, hands in hands. So after school, I nervously went to the parking lot. He threw the car key at me and sneered. Drive! You better do as I say or else I'll make sure you're expelled. It didn't look like I had much of a choice. So I decided to go with him to find out what that maggot would do. He made me drive him home. <laughs> Simple enough. But then as soon as I opened the door, my dad appeared and in a pleading voice said to Jace, Please, sir, don't have my son expelled. Dad, what are you doing? Apologize to him at once, no matter what the reason is. Dad looked at me with steady eyes. Jace sneered at my dad and said, How about you take the blame so he won't get expelled? Then he threw a bunch of money at my dad's face. You're fired. I shouted at him. You can't treat people awfully just because you have money. Victor, stop. You're wrong. Please, I saved you from the accident, so please forgive my son. Then Dad pulled one trouser leg to reveal his artificial leg. That was the first time I saw my dad cry. Wait, this reminded me of what happened last year. I was being such a jerk to this guy that he purposefully drove towards me for vengeance. But Jace's dad darted forward and pushed me out of the way. I know he was badly injured, but as an insouciant boy, I didn't think it was a big deal. Whoa, I really was so arrogant. 
I expected everyone to bow down to me, and I actually thought everyone wanted to be my friend, when in actual fact, I had no true friends at all. My head felt like it was going to explode. I wanted to run away, so I jumped into the car and drove away without thinking. I stopped the car when I saw it, the tunnel that had changed my life. Suddenly, this blinding light shone straight into my eyes. The next thing I knew, both me and the car were gravitating towards the light. Huh? Where am I? It looks like a hospital. Then I heard a yelp of delight and someone held my hand tightly. Oh, it was my mom. Thank goodness you're awake, she said, as tears streamed down her cheeks. Mom, Dad, why am I here? What day is it today? Son, it's May 22nd. You've been in a coma for the past three months. We weren't even sure if you were going to make it. It turns out that day, on the way home from the party, in the tunnel, I had a terrible car crash and ended up in a coma. So what I'd been through was just a dream, right? But the odd thing was that the time I'd lived in that mysterious world completely coincided with the time when I was in the coma. Could parallel universes be physically real? Whatever that strange universe was about, one thing was for sure. I'd learned my lesson. After being discharged from the hospital, I went back to being Victor, Jack a dandy. But don't get me wrong, I was not the extravagant me of the past. No, I'm a changed guy. The first thing I did when I returned to my normal life was to break up with that gold digger, Jessica. But the hungry leech kept begging me to get back together. How shameless. Next, I for sure have to stop making other kids do my errands and started to have small talk with them instead of giving orders. Now there was only one thing left to do. I needed to make amends with Jace. I asked my parents to give his dad a raise and also throw a little dinner party this weekend to invite his family around. As I felt bad that I haven't had a chance to thank Jace's dad properly for what he did for me last year. Of course, my parents gladly agreed and said that they're proud of me for being so thoughtful. So I'm preparing a little peacemaker gift for Jace too. I bet this is going to make him geek out all the way. <laughs> I was minding my own business when I noticed everyone was giving me weird looks. Hmm, what's wrong? I turned the corner and saw Cynthia and her followers blocking my locker. Oh, great. There she is, the girl that's into old men. Aw, is it because you don't have an actual dad, so you found yourself a sugar daddy instead? O-M-G, what is she talking about? Everyone was gawping at me, and her friends burst out laughing. Panicked, I turned around and ran to the restroom. Those girls are so vile. How can they have taken such a simple situation and manipulated it? I locked myself in the cubicle and didn't dare come out. A knock at the door caused me to flinch, but then I heard a familiar voice. Nicole? It's me, Olivia. Are you okay? I opened the door and saw my friend standing there, looking at me with concern. She hugged me, then led me out into the hallway where Miss Barnes was waiting for me. The rumors had reached her, and she wanted to talk to me about it. <sighs> Sweetie, I want to help you, but you need to tell me everything. I had nothing to hide, so straight away, I told her everything about Sean, who's my karate teacher. We became friends since we shared the love for guitars, killer karate moves, and old-school punk rock bands. When I finished, she said, To be honest, I find it a bit peculiar that a man his age is choosing to spend so much time with a young girl. I think it's best I have a little chat with this Sean. So please, can you give him a call and invite him over? Sean came straight over. And as he chatted to Mrs. Barnes in her office, I nervously waited outside with Olivia. I'm just a girl without a dad. Sean is kind, and he treats me like his own daughter. What Cynthia said is cruel and untrue. Don't worry. No one believes Cynthia. They all know what she's like. A few moments later, Sean stepped out of the office. He scratched his head as he told me to say goodbye to Miss Barnes and Olivia as he was driving me home. In the car, I asked, What did you say to Miss Barnes that made her agree to let me go with you? I, um, I said that the child would be around your age. Huh? What did he mean by that? Then he continued, Nicole, I have a long-lost child. I've been desperate to see them and be in their life, but it didn't work out like that. Then I met you and... I found myself bonding with you as if you were my own child. 
Hearing that, I asked right away, Sean, would you like to be my dad? He gave me this dumbfounded look, so I excitedly continued. I mean, you're single, right? So is my mom. Why don't you two meet up and have a date? Just give it a try, please. Whoa, if Sean was my dad, my life would be fantastic. I smiled from ear to ear, seeing him bewildered. In my head, I instantly began planning their first date. Eek! This was the most exciting thing ever! But my good mood soon evaporated, as waiting for me on the doorstep with crossed arms and a stern expression was my mom. This was definitely not the time to introduce them, so I quickly thanked Sean and hurried inside. Who's that man? She questioned me. I received a call from Ms. Barnes, so I've been waiting for you. Who is that stranger? He's my karate teacher. He's just... Then Mom interrupted me. Why exactly is a man double your age choosing to spend time with a teenage girl? Don't worry, Mom. When you meet him, you'll see what a great guy he is. The next day, I arranged for them to have a lunch date at this quaint cafe in town. But the moment Mom walked in and saw him, she turned ghostly pale. Sean was also surprised. He stuttered, Lu- Louise? My mom cleared her throat. Ahem! Sean? This was confusing. I looked back and forth at them as if I was watching an intense game of tennis. So, they knew each other? Oh well, less time wasted on getting to know each other. So, I'm gonna leave you to it. I waved at them, then hurried out of there and sat on a bench nearby. It hadn't even been five minutes when Mom stormed over. Let's go! And dragged me away. I forbid you from seeing that man again! What was happening? I was freaking out as I followed her. Mom! Slow down! At least explain why! I shouted, but she bundled me into the car then drove off, red-faced and silent. Through the car window, I saw Sean run outside of the cafe and stare at me with a saddened look on his face. Mom, you know him? I asked. She said, That's none of your business. You just have to know that you are not allowed to see him ever again. Why? I yelled as I started tearing up. He's nice to me. Why can't I be friends with him? Because you have to listen to your mother. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was Sean. I picked up, and he told me to turn the speaker so he could talk to Mom. Louise, it's me, Sean. Mom gave a startled yelp and told me to hang up, but I ignored her. Sean continued. Louise, listen. Is Nicole my daughter? Um, what? Did I hear him right? Can someone please explain what was going on? Louise, tell me. Is Nicole my daughter? Mom snatched the phone off me, ended the call, then threw it onto the back seat. I was too overwhelmed to find any words to say, so we both sat there in shocked silence. The moment we entered our house, seeing that I was desperate to speak, Mom spoke up first. Nicole, please don't ask anything. I'll explain later, okay? I really wanted to know what had happened between them, but I knew there was no reasoning with Mom when she was being like this. So I quietly went up to my room. I couldn't sleep, as too many thoughts were buzzing around my head. Could Sean really be my dad? I mean, I'd never met my real dad. And whenever I asked Mom about him, she got super defensive. Mom and Sean clearly had history. So what if we're actually related? Unsurprisingly, I couldn't concentrate in school. I kept on yawning in class and playing over yesterday's events over and over in my head. When school's out, to my surprise, Sean was waiting for me at the school gate. We went to a coffee house, and there he told me the truth. Back in high school, I fell in love with my classmate. After a while, she suddenly told me she was pregnant and broke up with me. I definitely wanted to support and care for both of them. But she refused, then moved away. The last thing she told me was to stay away and never, ever look for them. Before I had time to process his words, he smiled at me and continued. Nicole, I believe that you're my daughter. But first, we need to talk to your mom. 
and have her clear this up. Whoa, this was a lot to take in. But at the same time, it was also pretty awesome. I was so happy I had a father. And better still, it was Sean. I took Sean to my house to talk to mom, but just as we stepped inside, I got a message from Olivia. Check your social media. Cynthia's just posted something about you. Oh no. There was a photo of me getting into Sean's car with the caption, Need tips on getting a sugar daddy? Ask Nicole. I freaked out. Now, thanks to Cynthia, everyone would misjudge me and make fun of me. I was so furious that when mom walked over, I couldn't hold it in anymore. This is all your fault. Now everyone believes lies about me. And it's all because you won't tell me the truth. Mom gave me this hurt look, sighed and softly said, You're right. I do owe you both the truth. Then she turned to Sean. When I told you I was pregnant, that was a lie. What? How could she lie about something like that? I didn't want to be with you anymore. But I was too scared to break up with you decently. So I made that story up, believing that it'd scare you away. But when you said you'd stick around and support us both, I panicked. So... I moved away to college and found a new boyfriend. Then I fell pregnant with Nicole. But this boyfriend wasn't ready to be a father, so he abandoned us both. As I tried to absorb this new information, I found myself feeling an overwhelming sense of disappointment. Perhaps Sean felt the same, as he muttered out, I can't be around you right now. Goodbye, Louise. Then he left. My world had come crashing down around me. I didn't know what to do or say. So I just locked myself in my room and sat there in silence. A few days later at school, Olivia came running over to me and blurted out, Have you heard? Cynthia's been suspended for spreading false rumors about people. Now everyone knows that she's a liar. Well, I'm glad everyone knows. But honestly... Cynthia and her fake stories didn't really bother me anymore. I had bigger things to worry about, like Sean. I hadn't heard anything from him since Mum's confession, and I really hoped he was okay. Then, a week later, Sean texted me. Nicole, I care for you as if you were my own daughter. I don't want to lose you from my life. There's more. I've done some research, and I've found your dad. If you want, I'll take you to meet him. Gulp? I was finally going to meet my real dad. On the way there, Sean lightened me up chatting about guitars and tuning on Joy Division. It was so good to have him back in my life. I guess it's normal for kids who don't know a parent to imagine what they'd be like, right? Well, when I came face to face with my real dad, the reality didn't match my expectations. I showed him a photo of me and mom, and he denied ever knowing her and slammed the door in my face. Ouch. Sean made sure I was okay, then drove me back. The moment I arrived home, I flung myself on the couch and cried into the cushion. He must have filled Mum in on what had happened, as she rushed over to me. Honey, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault, because I'm a coward who couldn't deal with my own issues. But things will be different from now on. I promise. Then Sean knelt down next to me. Nicole, I meant what I said before. I view you as a daughter. And if it's okay with your mom, I'd love to be your dad. Mom nodded her head and said, Yes, if that's what Nicole wants. I leaped up and hugged them both. At that moment, I realized I don't care if my biological dad didn't want to know me. I didn't need him, as I already have mom and Sean. Now, my mom has learned to be brave and confront her problems, instead of running away from them. She now co-parents me with Sean, and even though they aren't back together, they are great friends. And you know what? I've never been happier. Hey, what exactly do you think you're doing? I know you stole my money. Give it back to me right now! Yeah, give it back to Sophie. That's her allowance. What money? I don't know about any money. 
I shrugged as I walked toward my bed, ignoring Sophie's furious face. After that, I had to listen to Sophie throw more accusations at me. Blah, blah, blah. I know it was only because I was a tomboy, so surely if a girl chooses to have short hair and wear baggy clothes, then she must be a thief? Poof. Eventually, I reached my breaking point. Quit with the accusations. I didn't steal any money. I didn't even know you had money. I know you took it. If you don't return it to me this instant, then I'm going to tell Miss Hopkins. Her idle threats didn't bother me, so I just flopped down on my bed and played on my phone. Talk about a heavy atmosphere. Ugh. Then I saw them all frantically checking their phones and giving each other confused looks. So I took an ear pod out and heard a phone ringing from over by Sophie. Isn't that your new phone, Sophie? Why don't you pick it up? W what? No! Sophie stuttered while Bella and Carly stared at her, all confused. I walked over to Sophie's bed, lifted the pillow, and yep, there was a brand new iPhone 13 Pro Max. So, Sophie, if there's nothing wrong with your brand new phone, then why did you feel the need to hide it so badly and not answer my calls? She nervously chewed on her nails, then blurted out, Fine! I spent all my allowance on a new phone. I knew my parents would be livid that I spent it so quickly. So I thought it'd be easier to blame you, since you're new and look kinda intimidating. Nice. I stared at her. You could have, you know, found someone dumber to mess with, as I already see right through you and your dirty schemes. But whatever. Girls, I'm sorry. She gave Bella and Carly pleading looks. Please forgive me. They both shook their heads and told her that she'd have to ask Miss Hopkins, the dormitory supervisor, for a room change, else they'd tell everyone what she did. So Sophie angrily packed, then moved out. When the room was Sophie free, Carly and Bella apologized to me, then helped me tidy up my stuff. I smiled at them. No worries, it's cool. After that, they wouldn't quit complimenting my clothes and style, and how smart I was. This was flattering and all, but I kept my chill exterior. That weekend, the school took us out on some woodland activity day. Our teachers organized a treasure hunt and divided us into groups. I ended up with Carly, Bella, and these two other girls. The teacher handed Bella the map, and she held it up the wrong way. I think this map's broken. I chuckled, took it off her, then using the first clue we'd been given, I quickly found out that we needed to walk 100 steps east and find a tree by the lake. Turns out, all of the other clues were as easy-peasy as the first one, and soon we'd finish the game. In first place! Everyone was gawping and clapping at me. Poof, it's just a piece of cake! We were on our way back to the dorm room when Carly sidled up to me and said, Hey Sam, you did great today! <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Puzzle games are my cup of tea. Hey, I have an idea. Let's form a detective team, as our school still has a few cases unsolved. That's a good idea. With the Sherlock Holmes minds of ours combined, nothing is impossible. Then the three of us looked at one another and laughed. I gave a nod in agreement. I mean, a detective agency sounded kind of fun. And that's how the CSI detective team was born. It stands for Caroline, Samantha, Isabel. Of course. At first, everyone laughed at us because they thought this group was nonsense. But then, the math exam was stolen, and through our expert investigation skills, we linked it to none other than Aubrey, the top student in the class. Hey, we even caught the creep who broke into the school to spy on the girls. And it was only a matter of time till everyone began to recognize our talents. One day, the three of us were standing at the locker when a series of message alarms rang out. It turns out that our school's confession page has a new post, claiming that Liam, the most popular boy at school, was seducing, then defrauding numerous girls. They also posted some of the love notes Liam had slid into the girls' locker to manipulate them into giving him money. The message showed, I can't wait to take you on a special date, but my debit card won't work. If you lend me yours, I'll make our date unbelievable. I promise. X. OMG. This is unbelievable. At that moment, I felt a tap on my shoulder, 
and I turned around to see a sullen-looking Liam standing there. Please, you've got to help me. These are all false accusations. Please help me find out who did this. And you know, of course, all of us nodded immediately. No one would refuse to help a boy as cute as Liam. Oh, I mean, we're the school's famous detective team, so how can we ignore this? Right? Yeah, right. I rolled my eyes. I didn't blame Carly for liking Liam. I mean, everyone likes him. Um, I guess even I did. Bella then interrupted my daydreaming. Come on, guys. Let's focus on our job. I think the person who did this must have some kind of grudge against Liam. Everyone agreed and started investigating, which led me to sneak into Liam's dorm and rifle through the bin. Bingo! I found a scrunched up piece of paper with the messages Liam had supposedly sent to his victims, scrawled in green ink. Then, who should just so happen to have green smudge on their hand but James, one of Liam's roommates? It turns out... James did this just because he was jealous of Liam's popularity. How petty. Well, this success certainly made the detective group more credible. We actually had our own fan base, and I was always overhearing other kids talking about us in a good way. Best of all, Liam was so grateful to us that he started hanging out with us more. We even went to the park with him one weekend, and he bought us all ice creams. Carly kept on flicking out her hair and giving him doe-eyed looks. Well, being the chilled girl I am, I kept it at a smile and a thanks. The only one who didn't seem impressed by Liam was Bella, who took the ice cream, forced a polite smile, then ignored him. Oh well, at least this meant one less competitor for his affection. <laughs> one day, we were having lunch, when we overheard the girls at the next table talking about how a girl saw a ghost in the old chemistry lab, and it scared her so badly, she refused to leave her bedroom for days. According to the others, the legend of this ghost had been around for a long time. Now, this sounded like a job for the CSI, but Bella immediately folded her arms and shook her head. No, I'm not going. There are no ghosts in this world. I firmly said, yep, so we have to go and clear this up. But no matter how much Carly and I tried to persuade her, she point blank refused to go. Don't you know about the curse? If anyone goes looking for this ghost, they will be cursed and have bad luck for the rest of their lives. Didn't you just say there are no ghosts in this world? So why does that dumb curse bother you? Actually, I... I'm afraid of ghosts. I looked at Bella and tried not to laugh. Okay, so you stay in the room. Then me and Carly went to discuss plans for the evening. We were hiding in the corner of the chemistry lab. Jeez... It was boring in here, and I was kind of hungry. I should have brought snacks. Suddenly, a cold wind blew past us. It made me all goose pimply. Carly shook my arm and whispered, Sam, let's go back to the dorm. Shh! I heard something. Footsteps. Then I felt a touch on my shoulder. I looked at Carly. Then we both screamed and bolted for the door. Thud! We hit something and fell to the floor. I scrambled to get up and saw Carly with her eyes closed and praying. P please ghost, P please forgive us. What are you doing here this late? I looked up. It turned out to be a frowning Miss Hopkins. Yep, we both ended up getting a week's worth of detention for sneaking around at this hour. Ugh. After Miss Hopkins gave us another lecture, and escorted us back to our dorm, Bella looked at us from her bed and said, I told you that you'd both end up cursed, didn't I? I snorted. I mean, a curse was nonsense, right? But then weird things started happening to me and Carly. My history assignment disappeared ten minutes before the deadline. Carly went to put her sports kit on and found it covered in mudstains. And our personal items kept on disappearing, then reappearing in weird places. Worse still, the rumor of the detective team being cursed spread very quickly. Enough was enough. I needed to investigate this so-called curse and get to the bottom of it. I told Bella and Carly what I planned to do, but they didn't seem convinced. No, what if something bad happens? I'm never going back there. Sam, you shouldn't go there either. Okay, okay, chill. I won't do it. 
It's just an idea. Calm down. That's what I told them. But the thing is, I don't give up easily, and I needed to figure out what was going on. So that night, I snuck out of the room and went to the lab alone. The hallway leading to the lab was so dark and quiet that I could hear my own breathing. Then suddenly, I saw a dark figure standing in front of the lab door. I tiptoed over. Then I heard a voice. Did anyone see you? Hmm. So ghosts can talk now? But wait, why is this voice so familiar? I shone my phone flashlight at it. B- Bella? And Liam? Bella startled. Listen to me first. It's not what you're thinking. Oh my god, had my friend been betraying me all this time? I immediately turned away and stormed off. Bella tried catching up with me to explain, but I didn't want to hear it. It was her all along. She'd played those sneaky tricks on Carly and me so we thought we were cursed and wouldn't go back to her and Liam's secret rendezvous place. Back in the room, I told Carly what had happened, and we decided to ignore Bella. That's what she deserved. One day, we were eating lunch when Bella came over. Both of us were about to leave, but Bella hurriedly said, Please give me a chance to explain. There's no need to explain. We know what you did. I know I messed up, but it's only because I'm afraid you guys will react like this and I didn't want to lose our friendship. I put down the tray and reluctantly sat down. I've been dating Liam for a while, and we were going to go public, but then I could see that you both liked him, and I was worried you'd be mad at me, and our detective team would disband. God, you're such an idiot. Do you think we're that selfish? So, yeah, we have a bit of a crush on Liam, but if you told us you were dating him, we would have been cool with it. Hearing that, Bella looked embarrassed. Then she gave a reconciling smile. Then we all hugged each other and promised that from now on, there would be no more secrets between us. And of course, the CSI detective team is still active, and now even has a hot new boy member. Yep, you guessed it right. It's none other than Liam. Holy baloney! Who is that? This guy was next level hot! And there's more. As I neared him, he didn't run off looking afraid! Seeing me dumbfoundedly gasping, Scarlet elbowed me. Wake up, chicka! We're late! She giggled as she dragged me to class. I saw it. Never thought I'd see the day that Margot the Troublemaker would go all gooey-eyed over some boy. <laughs> Scarlet teased me. I blushed and was completely tongue-tied, eyes looking around awkwardly. It's a shame you're basically a walking, talking boy repellent. Yeah, right. I lowered my head to think, and when I looked up, Scarlet was texting, probably some cringe overload message to her boyfriend, Keith. I rested my chin on my hands and stared out of the window as I found myself daydreaming about that cute mystery guy. What time do you call this? Are you trying to get me kicked out of this place for covering for you again? Um, so's. I had something super important to do with Alfie. Important, huh? So I could end up in trouble for covering your butt? Because you want to pull some lame prank with that loser? Uh-uh. How many times do I have to tell you? We only pranked him once, and that jerk totally deserved it. About that jerk? He's the captain of the basketball team, and Alfie's my friend. Okay, he might look a bit intimidating, but he's a nice guy. But that jock not only knocked Alfie out with his basketball, he also took his money out of his pocket when he was down. We weren't going to let him get away with this. So that night, we snuck out and poured greasy cooking oil all over the field, which made the whole team slip and fall again and again. It was hilarious. Unfortunately, word of our involvement reached the principal, so Scarlet had to call her dad to help me. Okay, so this wasn't exactly the first time Scarlet had saved me. She only got mad as she had to save Alfie's butt too, even though she hates him. <laughs> Come on, I'm sorry. Would you mind? 
It's midnight and we need to sleep. Shut up, Miley. No one asked you. Fine. Go to bed and shut up so we can actually get some sleep. Poof. Those girly girls. Wake up, princess. The class is over. I groggily got up and followed Scarlet like a zombie to the cafeteria. But then I came to an abrupt halt. There, standing on the corner of the hallway, was that handsome guy. What on earth is going on? I've asked Keith to do some research. Now, do you want my help or not? I still froze and couldn't say anything. OMG, I'd never felt so nervous like this before. I nodded while holding her arm. <laughs> wow, so all it took for the mighty Margot to turn into a timid wreck was some dude? Oh, and by the way, he's called Jared, and he's studying classical music. Very elegant. Huh? I blurted out. Classical music? This sucks! I mean, how's a girl like me ever gonna reach his level? Don't worry, I'll help you. Then she changed her attitude. On one condition. Hmm, <laughs> you know what? Scarlet demanded me to stop hanging out with Elfie, cause it was not good for the girly image I needed to get Jared's attention. Plus, I wouldn't be allowed to pass the dorm's curfew. If I broke these conditions, then she wouldn't help me anymore. Fine, I agree. Sorry, Elfie, you'll just have to carry on without me. Keith befriended Jared and asked him to come over to our school again to check on those pianos in the music room. When there's an oops emergency, he will leave Jared with me, who it turns out is struggling with the piano. Genius! As you can see, this plan is going well so far. Just this dress was really suffocating me. Ugh, but being around Jared seemed to suffocate me even more. Luckily, he was quite friendly, so we started talking easily, and now he's playing for me. Do you have any plans after school? No. Not yet. I'm about to go to this music cafe in town. Would you like to join me? OMG! Of course I said yes! Does this count as a first date? We actually had a lot of fun. I was in seventh heaven. On our way back, I was startled when I saw Elfie across the street. Noticing me with Jared, Elfie glared at me with this maddened, wide-eyed look. I gave him the shush sign and looked away. No surprises. My phone beeped. You blew me off to hang out with that sissy boy? And what's with your clothes? Jeez, Elfie was angry for sure, but I couldn't do this right now. I'd promised Scarlet I wouldn't talk to him anymore. So I ignored the message and walked straight past him. As soon as I arrived back at the dorm, the girls cooed around and asked me about the date. They seemed so happy for me. So, when's the next date? He asked me to come over to his school tomorrow, and then we're gonna have dinner. The girls screamed in unison. Surprising, as I didn't think these grumpy girls cared this much about me. I was so excited about the date, so I arrived early at Jared's school to find him practicing with another girl. I walked into the room with a smile on my face, and Jared introduced me to her, Maeve. Then he told me to wait there and left to go to the bathroom. This Maeve girl sniggered, then looked me up and down and said, Give it up! An unrefined girl like you doesn't deserve him. Huh? What on earth did I ever do to her? Angry, I knocked over her music sheets. She picked it up, then sternly said, Just you wait. I won't let you get away with it. Then she shoved past me and stormed off. Then, at dinner, I couldn't help it. So, that Maeve? Ah, uh, our parents are very close, so we've been friends since we were little. And now we both study music. She seems really into you. I'm not so sure about that. We're just friends. So he doesn't like that Maeve girl? I guess. Just forget about her. I have a very important date with Jared and I need your help. Right at that moment, a call from Alfie arrived. But Scarlet was sitting right next to me, so I couldn't pick up. After a few calls, he texted me. You gotta help me this time. I can't do it by myself. Oh, God help me. I didn't have the heart to abandon my friend. So, I decided to sneak out and go see Alfie. Okay, so it's not what you think. Those times I was late weren't because we were up to no good. We've been fixing up this abandoned house for these homeless kids instead. 
This time, one of those kids, Kevin, had a serious fever. I had to help Elfie borrow some money and take Kevin to the hospital. I tried to be deadly quiet as I crept into the dorm room, but I swear, Scarlet is the lightest sleeper in existence. And sure enough, she was there waiting for me. Oh, hi, Margo. It's nice of you to join us. Yeah, sorry. It was, um, an emergency. You just can't help yourself, can you? You broke our agreement to go hang out with that thug friend of yours. I'm not helping you ever again. <sighs> this sucked. It looked like I was on my own. This is it. My big date with Jared. His dad's the conductor here, and from what I can gather, that's a massive deal. Without Scarlet to help me find the right dress for this event was a nightmare. Oh man, everyone looked so luxurious and classy. I felt like a sore thumb. This obviously wasn't the world I belonged to. But Jared's gentle smile soothed me down a lot. But soon, Maeve was coming towards us. Ugh! Jared, darling, congrats! I think this concert will be amazing! Oh, it's you again. Nice dress. Ugh! She was really pulling on my leg. But stay calm. Now breathe. Breathe. Then they both talked about Mozart, Beethoven. I didn't understand a thing, as well as the whole concert. I didn't understand either. Afterward, Jared led me over to his parents. OMG, this was scary. I gave them the bouquet of flowers I've prepared and congratulated them on the concert. Luckily, they both seemed really friendly and were really content with my gift. But then Maeve appeared and hugged Jared's mom. Jared, it's lovely to be around such polite girls. Smirking, Maeve replied, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Margo here likes hiding her true personality. Okay, so I may have failed to keep my cool and blurted out some bad words. Oops. Jared and his parents looked shocked by this. But before I could try and rectify the situation, Maeve pulled out her phone and waved around a photo of me with Alfie. I wanted to explain, but I just ended up stuttering out a load of nonsense. In the end, Jared pulled me aside and told me, I think it's best if you just leave. I ran out of there close to tears. Worse still, I couldn't run in this dumb dress. I'd lost Jared, and it was past curfew. So if I went back now, Scarlet would get mad at me. So I decided that I wasn't going to go back. Nope. Instead, I was going to run away. I'd been staying here for a couple of days. I feel safe here, and Alfie bought me some clothes and food. Ugh. Why is she here? I wasn't in the mood for a lecture. But to my surprise, she rushed over to me and wrapped her arms around me. How could you just leave me like that? Have you any idea how worried I've been? Anyway, Alfie told me everything. I'm sorry for misjudging you. She pulled away. You do stink, though. <laughs> There's one more person who wants to see you, Margot. I looked at him with confusion. Then at the door, it was Jared. Margot, when I saw that photo, I was shocked. I thought I must be some joke to you, and you were really with Alfie. But then I couldn't stop thinking about you. Now I've spoken to Scarlet and Alfie. I know better. I like you, Margot. The real you. And I don't want you to think you have to change for me. Do you think you can give this idiot another chance? I hesitated, pretending that it was something I had to think about. Then smirking, I shouted out, yes, and rushed into his arms. So... What now? Well, I'm back in the dorm, and yep, I still sneak out, and yep, Scarlet still covers for me. <laughs> Jared and I are an official couple, and he's even helping me with a fundraiser concert to help out the homeless kids. So, I guess that this tough girl is actually not so tough after all. <laughs> Emma, your teacher, Mrs. Holm, called again. She said your grades are appalling and you don't pay attention in class. Why can't you be more like your sister? Yawn. Not this speech again. It's been like this ever since I started elementary school. In my mum's eyes, 
only my sister, Evelyn, inherited our dad's intelligence, while I'm just the senseless member of the family. Ugh, as if. She's only good with useless books. Bet she doesn't know anything practical, like how dad's ethernet company works and such. But whatever, I don't care. I'm full, I announced as I got up and went to my little headquarters, the garage. I was busy working on my own personal project, so I didn't have time to give a hoot about who my mom's favorite child is. Oh, you must be wondering what I'm working on. Well, this device broadcasts Wi-Fi. Sounds familiar, right? But my device is able to broadcast across the entire city. Not only that, the connection is stronger and much more stable than the Wi-Fi people use at home. And it's more convenient without all the cables and stuff. This is without a doubt my proudest work ever. And what a coincidence that a few days earlier at school, Mrs. Home announced that for the first time, the school was organizing an invention contest. Normally, I give school activities a miss. But this time was different. This contest could be fun, right? There was no time to waste, so I put all my spare time, day and night, into making my invention contest ready. And you won't believe what happened. I won first prize. And that's not all. One of the judges, Mr. Johnson, was so interested in my invention that he offered to invest in it. At first, I was kind of scared and hesitated to agree because, I mean, I was still in high school. But this was an opportunity of a lifetime. So how could I deny it, right? So after that, Mr. Johnson sorted out a manufacturing company and office space for me downtown. This is cool, but I prefer to work in my garage. It's just more convenient that way, with me still being at school and all. I upgraded my device and launched it to the public. And you know what? It was a huge success. Pretty much everybody in the city got rid of their old, laggy Wi-Fi devices and accessed mine. Then one day, I got a call from the local news channel asking to interview me and my family at home. Oh my god, yes! Oh, there's just one snag. I hadn't told my family about it yet because, um, I don't know. Maybe I just know there's no way they'd believe me? Like the time I got an A in my physics exam, and my mom instantly asked if I cheated. But, well, whatever. This is much bigger than that. So I quickly ran downstairs to the living room and excitedly told my family that the invention benefiting the town was mine. But Mum and Evelyn burst out laughing. So you're telling me that this Wi-Fi, which is broadcasting across the entire city, is your invention? Yeah, Mom, it's mine. Then Mom and Evelyn laughed even louder. Honey, it's bad enough you're failing at school. Please don't start lying. Ugh, forget about it. Why did I even try? Then, the morning after, when the doorbell rang, my mom opened it and saw a reporter and a cameraman. She couldn't believe her eyes. Mom and Evelyn exchanged panicked looks then rushed upstairs to prepare. It was so hilarious. <laughs> the hysterics continued as they interviewed my parents. I watched my nervous, sweaty dad stand there like an awkward statue, while mom began bragging about me like, as soon as Emma was born, I knew she was a genius like her dad. I always encourage her to pursue her dreams. Jeez, and the Oscar goes too. My mom. I didn't know she could act that well. To be honest, since I could remember, Mom never said anything nice about me. Ever. But now that she knew I was the mastermind behind the town's Wi-Fi, she would probably treat me differently. Right? Wrong. Then one night I came downstairs for a glass of milk and overheard Mom and Dad talking in the living room. Emma is such a selfish child. How badly will this affect your business? The truth is, the company's going through tough times. But don't worry. We're trying everything we can. Huh? Did I do something? And what's wrong with Dad's company? I tried to eavesdrop more, but suddenly I heard my dad standing up from the couch, so I quickly ran upstairs to my room. The next day, Dad forgot to take his lunch with him to work, so Mom asked me to take it over. But when I got to his company floor, it was deserted. Huh? Where was everybody? 
Did everybody get a day off or something? But that couldn't be it, right? That evening, over dinner, I asked Dad. I went to your office at midday, but not a single person was there. What's going on? Mom suddenly put her cutlery down and gave Dad a shocked look. Is what Emma just said true? Dad lowered his head and sighed out. Yes, it's true. I temporarily shut the company last week. I didn't want you all to worry, so I didn't tell you. I'm sorry. What? How could you? You said you would fix it! That's when it hit me. But I deeply prayed it wasn't the truth. So I asked him, is it because of my device? Dad didn't answer me. He just glared sadly down at his dinner. But I knew what his silence meant. I was right. Suddenly, Evelyn stood up and screamed in my face. It's all your fault! You invented that stupid device, and now Dad's business is at stake! That's so typical of you. You never think before you act. Then she stomped off upstairs. I just sat there speechless. I just wanted my family to be proud of me, but instead, it seemed like they despised me more than ever. Then Dad turned to me and softly said, Emma, this isn't your fault. I was kind of waiting for my mom to say something, anything at all, but she didn't. She just cleaned up the table. I felt really bad about what happened to Dad. But hey, now I had to work even harder so I could provide for my family, right? After that, Mom completely ghosted me. <sighs> As for my sister, whenever our paths crossed, she gave me a dagger look and muttered out mean comments like, Let's see how long it takes for your precious business to fail. I tried to ignore her, but then she took it too far. One Sunday, I was in my garage working away, when suddenly I heard loud noises coming from outside. I opened the garage door to see a crowd of people holding signs saying, We lost our jobs because of you, and no job, no future. My god, they were protesters. I think they were from my dad's office. Wait a minute. I spotted a familiar face. Evelyn? She was holding a big sign saying, My dad lost his job because of you. Eventually, dad came out and dispersed the crowd. Then he called an emergency family meeting. How could you do that to me? The correct question would be how could you do that to dad? Thanks to you, dozens of people have lost their jobs? You're making people's lives miserable. Enough, both of you. Evelyn, what you did was wrong. Families are supposed to support each other. But Dad, she- Didn't you just hear what I said? Evelyn gave me a dirty look, then she ran off to her room. I looked at Mom, who was leaning against the wall with her arms folded. Did she agree with what Evelyn did? Or was she on my side? My God, please say something. But to my surprise, after that, my mother started talking to me again, and she was actually being nice. She even started cleaning my room and workspace. Whoa, this was new? Had she finally accepted me? Then one day, I received tons of emails complaining about my Wi-Fi. It took me all day, but I finally found the cause of the problem. My laptop. Somebody had tampered with it. It didn't take a genius to figure out who it was. Evelyn, duh. But I needed proof, so I set up a trap. The next evening, when everybody was having dinner, I ran downstairs, quickly grabbed a piece of bread and said, I need to go run some errands. Oh, and can you please stay out of the garage as I'm uploading some important files? Mom and Dad nodded and smiled at me. Evelyn, on the other hand, just rolled her eyes and continued eating. Well... At least I knew my plan was in motion. I walked outside and hid behind the bushes. So, what's my plan, you ask? Well, I set up my laptop so that when anyone opened it, it would automatically send a notification to my phone and turn on the camera so I could see who it was. I waited for an hour, but still nothing. Then suddenly, my phone beeped. Somebody was opening my laptop. They hadn't switched the light on yet, so it was too dark to see them but I was 100% sure who it was. Time to expose. What are you doing sneaking out here? Evelyn? 
What was she doing out here? Wait, if Evelyn was here, then who was it in the garage? Not answering Evelyn's question, I ran like crazy into the garage to capture this intruder. And as soon as I turned on the lights, I couldn't believe who was messing with my laptop. It was... Mom! What on earth was going on? I called a family meeting and told everyone what Mom did. Dad and Evelyn looked shocked and asked Mom why she did it. I just couldn't stand seeing your dad suffer anymore. He put his life into that company, and now he's just a laughing stock. Do you realize our neighbors and relatives have been gossiping about him? They think it's so pitiful that he lost out to his own daughter. So I did what any self-respecting wife would do. Was she serious? Why didn't she just talk to me? All I ever wanted was for her to talk to me. Nothing else. But no, she decided to go behind my back and try to sabotage my business instead. After her betrayal, I'd had enough. So I didn't speak to her and avoided her as much as possible. It was one thing for mom to be cold towards me, but I never thought she was capable of doing this. This went on for weeks, and it got kind of tedious. Trust me, it's no fun trying to avoid someone in your own home. But then one day, I arrived back from school and saw Dad sitting in a corner in the living room, repairing his PC. Jeez, he looked so miserable. That's when the truth hit me. This was his passion, and I took it away from him. Suddenly, I understood why Mom did what she did. She saw how disheartened he was, but knew he'd never say anything to me because he's always supportive. But how can I fix everything? Should I give everything up so that my dad can reopen his company again? Ugh, why was this so hard to figure out? Wait a minute. I think I have the solution. You must be wondering what my dad was doing here. Well, I came up with the idea that we should work together. My dad's a pro with technology so it didn't take long to show him how things work around here. Oh, and since my business has grown, we were able to employ some of his former work employees too. With dad around to help, I have time to focus on my studies. Even Evelyn started helping out, and she was so good at it, I made her dad's assistant. Talk about a proper family business, ha! As for mom, we had a really long talk. I finally told her how awful her attitude towards me made me feel, and she apologized for everything she had done. I eventually forgave her. I knew she did that just because she loves dad very much. So after all that drama, we're now just one big happy family. 